Um, I am Javier Tordaguila. Um, I am the manager director of the Telebitis um, group. We are focused on precision viticulture at the University of La Rioja in Spain. Um, this work is just an international collaboration with a, a good friends from Portugal from the uh, Utah University in the Douro Valley. So, um, yeah, just to say that we, we work in, at the University of La Rioja. Yes, it's a, a public university located in Logroño. Um, we have a, the name of the, you know, the, of the, our university comes from, from the famous, one of the most famous wine in Spain is Rioja. So we are located in, in Logroño. Um, you can see here one is the, uh, I think a nice picture of the, um, of the, of the Rioja. Um, this is the, one of the most famous uh, wine regions from, from Tempranillo. So now now it's become a very popular here in America and in other, in another county. So um, Tempranillo, um, Rioja has more than 68,000 hectares. So it's about 150 acres of vineyard. 60% Tempranillo, and, but we grow also Graziano, Garnacha, Grenache, and another varieties. Um, so this is very a uh, large area. It's uh, along. It's along. Rioja is located above the the Ebro River Valley. So it's, uh, we are talking about the 120 kilometers long and around 30 30 kilometers width. So it's very large area. Um, so. Our, our uh, research group is focused on precision viticulture. So in the last talk, we, we discussed about the, you know, the, the terroir at the large scale, but if we focus in one plot, we can see very often that a very, there is a large spatial variation in a, even in a small plot. You can see one example of this. This is in, in Rioja, but it, it's happened very often in, in other counties, mostly maybe in the in, 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 in Mediterranean countries with the shallow, um, uh, dry areas. Um, you can see there is, the, you can see there is a large variation between the bottom and the, you know, and this top of the, of the vineyard. So the nutrients and the water's requirement, they are very, very different. So I think we need to, to, you know, to, take, in, to take into account the, the spatial variation into the vineyard. So it is difficult to define with average, with a number, the real situation of the vineyard. Um, so um, yeah, um, this is, is a new topic. So we need you know, to take into account the, the, this uh, large spatial variation, even in a, in a, small, in a small plot. Huh? Um, our our um, group is focused mostly in different um, new technologies. I think the new technologies can help the, the grower, the wine industry, you know, to, to improve the, the vineyard management. And so we try to, you know, to, to fill up the gap between the research and the one, one industry requirements. So I think is a, there is a big gap. So we try to know to give, um, to, to develop a new tools, new technologies for vineyard assessment. So mostly we are focused on different sensors, NAR sensor, RGB sensor, or fluorescent sensor like this. And we try to mount in different platforms, or drones, or even quad, or ATV. So try to, to give uh, some tool for, for, for vineyard assessment. But what happened with the soil? We, we, we observed this, this morning that it is difficult to, to study the different soils. So, you know, it, traditional soil sampling implies uh, is time demanding and labor demanding. And so this is very, very, very difficult, you know, to, to, to have a, a good spatial description of the spatial variation. So, yeah, so we, we, yeah, we try to, you know, to, 
to map the spatial variation in this sample using a traditional profiling study. So, but we, we observe a, a large variation even in a small five hectare Tempranillo vineyard close to Logroño. But this is, it is difficult, it requires a lot of time. So we, we try to, you know, to, to focus in a new sensor. We, we, so we, we try to, you know, to observe if are there are any good sensor for, for uh, soil sampling. And this is a, so just do a very nice review for Geber, for German expert in, in soil sensor. And you can see here there is a, 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 a high number of different sensors for, for soil mapping, mechanical, chemical, optical, electrical, reactivity, acoustical, climatic. But today we are focused on dialectical. This is a more common sensor. Um, Gerberts in 2009, they, they, he studied different sensors. Uh, the conclusion was that the, 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 um, there is a, a, a huge variation between the depth of the accumulated signal for a different sensor, you know, for the different soil sensors. So he concluded that the varies is America and the ARP made in France. Maybe they, they perform uh, the, the best sensor for, for, vineyard, for, for soil assessment. So we, in our, in our study, we try to, to use the ARPS sensor, this is automatic resistivity profiling sensor used on the go to map the homogeneous soil zone and that might correspond to the differences in growth, vegetative growth and yield in a, in a commercial vineyard. So well, regarding the material medium, so we work in here we are in, in Navarra, it's a, just a place called Estella location between Pamplona and Logroño in the north of Spain. It is a temperate vineyard, very nice. Um, we use this ARP sensor made in Paris, in France, by Jakarta. Um, we use all the go using a quad um, and 10 kilometers per hour. Um, the sensor is, they use, uh, there are four pairs of wheels. You can see here one is skin. The first two wheels is just injecting electrodes, and another three pairs of wheels, you can, they have a measuring electrode, so you can measure the resistivity at between zero and 0 0.5 meters, and another one is from zero to one meter, and the third one is from zero to two meters deep. So that's very important for, for, you know, for a vineyard because it's a, wood, a, perennial, a perennial species. So that is one picture of our study made four years ago. Um, the, the, the sensor was very, very, very easy and we work up around 10, 10 kilometers per, per hour in using an aquat. And also the, the, the ARP sensor has a, a GPS. So we got every, every all, all data are where your references data. Um, here you have one scheme of that. So here you can see we pass for each interval. Uh, for, you can see here the, the, you know, the, real, the real data, the real pass. So we, we take, we took 30,000 measurement per hectare. Can you imagine? So 10,000 for each layer. Totally 30,000 measurement, measurement for hectare. This is amazing, no? Comparison with the traditional profiling studies. Um, uh, at the same level, we, we established a, a regular grid, 20 meters between points um, for sampling point, for vegetative agile component assessment. So here we are in the commercial, yes, 3.6 hectare commercial vineyard in Navarra. Um, for agile uh, and global sampling, we, 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 we determine uh, cluster vine, number of cluster per vine, cluster weight, and crop G per vine. And regarding vegetative growth, crop field index, spot index, total soil length, and pruning weight, and 
Yeah, and so we established our regular grid was 66 sampling points, and each point has three binds. So there are a lot of data, and we try to combine all the data. So we, we, we use, we apply a different um, um, geostatistical analysis just to, 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 to find a relationship between the soil, uh, the soil data with the vine data. Okay, so you, we use different approaches, the areas influence, and season polygons. Uh, what about the result? You can see here just the three maps from the different layers. So the resistivity from between the first layer is 0.5 meters, the second is one meter, and the third is two, two meters depth. So here, you can see that, you know, the map uh, looks similar, um, but the, we observe a, large, a larger variation in the, in the deeper soil. Um, we we to try to find what is the relationship between the different the compos the resistivity in the, uh, among the different layer, and we observe that the the second and the third layer were very very well correlated, 0.95 between one and two meters deep, and less correlated with the with the with the shallow soil with the shallow layer. Sorry. Uh, we try to, to, you know, to figure out if we have, you know, to explore, to, to, to make two, to, to classify in two zone or three zone. Uh, in this case, in this case, you can see, you know, it, it was very similar the classification of the of the of the of the plot. So we decide to go forward for three zone. That is very common for precision viticulture. Um, here, you can see the correlation between the, the resistivity, the electrical resistivity at different layers with the yield component and the vegetative, vegetative, suit, uh, vegetative growth component. So we observe um, a, significant a significant relationship between the electrical resistivity with the all yield and suit and growth component, but they are weak. So the you know the the square the uh, square R was less than than 60. So well, but this, there were significant in all, in all cases there were we found a significant a significant correlation. So the question is, there were any significant differences between the yield and um, vegetative components in a different and uh, a different um, uh, soil zone, and here you have the answer. So you can see you, we establish using the, the the deeper the deeper the deeper layer. So two the, the, the we we make we made a sorry we we made a just using a three zone using the electrical resistivity at two meters deep. Um, and so we try to find the, the differences in, in, the, in, in the yield and the soot com and, and growth component. So we observe a very huge variation, a significant variation between the three zones for pruning weight, for soot length, but even more higher, higher differences, a significant differences for yield component. You can imagine here the red zone is number three. So it is a higher resistivity, is point is just point five kilos, and in the low resistivity zone, the green zone, is three point kilos. So this is amazing for a small a small vineyard, huh? a small vineyard. So with this data, I think we can conclude that there, you know the ARP sensor for measuring the soil resistivity, resistivity proved to fast and um, useful tool for precision agriculture, especially for, you know, for before planting, you know, because if we know the spatial variation of the soil before planting, we can, we can implement and we can uh, different techniques, for example, nutrition or, the, or to choose different soil, rooster, etc. Um, so that is, um, we, we also, uh, you know, the, the, uh, 
electrical resistivity was negative correlated with the vegetative growth and uh, the yield components. So just to finish, just to, to thank all my lab at the University of La Rioja, and I want, I want to invite you to visit our website. We are very open to collaboration, international collaboration. Thank you very much.